Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at an expansion for a game we like quite a bit called Nidavellir. And the expansion's called... wait for it... Thing Valir. So Thing Valir is an expansion for Nid Valir. We've already done a review for that. I'll put a link to it in uh, up at the top in the eye. So I'm not going to be really doing the playthrough when we go down to the, the table. I'm just going to show you what's in this box and how it changes the game. So this is basically going to add some new heroes and additional like placard. You know, you had the three taverns. This was going to add a camp where you can get some mercenaries and some artifacts. Oh yeah. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go down to the table, see what this has to offer. All right, so this is the items and cards and pieces that come in the expansion for Nidavellir called Thing Valir. I'm not gonna do a playthrough because I've already done that with the base game. I'll link to it in this video so you can check it out should you want to. And basically I'm just gonna tell you what comes in this game and how it's gonna change gameplay, which mostly is just more stuff, which is always cool, but this does change gameplay a little bit. So in the game, normally there's three taverns. There's a red one, a green one, and I think a blue one. There's level one, level two, level three. And when you win the bid, you get first pick from one of those taverns. But in this one, you're gonna have the camp here, off to the side or up top, wherever. And it's gonna contain these cards, which would be based on the number of players. So there will be mercenaries. This is just all the level one cards. So there's mercenaries, which basically are cards that can fall into two different categories. So should you want to you know, you need a green card, you could take this card instead and get a green card or an orange. There's also some tokens that you can mark if it's the first one in a row, just so you know which one you picked it. But once there's more than one in a row, the tokens are irrelevant. So that's all they do, pretty straightforward. They just give you more options on where you want to put some cards. Now, there's also some artifacts which are going to change the game a little bit. They're going to let you break some rules. So here's all the level one, the era one artifacts. So you're going to set these out according to the number of players. So if we were playing a five-player game, we'd have five cards. Or three cards, I guess. There's only ever three cards. Um, so and if you win the bid, you can either take from the normal tavern or you can take from the camp. So there's a mixture of those mercenaries like I just showed you and artifacts. The artifacts are basically going to just be either worth points. They might give you a way to score additional points. They could let you break some rules. Or in this case, this one's just a 13-point blue. So you can look at this. Uh, this is worth 28 points at the end of the game, but you can no longer get heroes when you fill out a row, which is whew, crazy. 13 point blue. This one will let you add two coins to one of your coins in your coin bag, three to the other. If you put your zero down there and the other coin, it'll add five to it. This one's gonna give you six points for every coin that's equal to or greater than 15, pretty solid. This one's really nice. If, some, if the first player who won the bid doesn't take one of the cards from the camp, you can take a card from the camp. And this one will give you five points for every hero that you've gotten. And again, there's just more of this awesome stuff in Era 2. More mercenaries, more artifacts, all that kind of thing. It's also going to give some more heroes, which is pretty straightforward. Um, this one's going to come with two of his little assistant guys. Use them in any color that you want to help you, help you get a hero. Uh, I'm not going to go into the rest of them. These are going to mess with your coins. This will help you do some stuff at the camp. Just, yeah, they're just... Everything's laid out in the rule book. You can check it out to see what they all do. But outside of adding the addition to the camp and the new heroes, the game plays the same. Um, there's also a new score pad, so you can keep track of your artifacts. See, they have the artifact symbol right there. Everything else is the same. And there's also a breakdown card of all of the artifacts that are in the Era 1 and Era 2 deck, which is pretty helpful because the iconography, yes, it makes sense once you've seen it, but if you've never played the game, this card is definitely what you're going to need to look at. So that is everything that comes in Thing of Valir. Let's go to the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was what you get in Thing Valir. So I'm going to say this. If you like Nid Valir, or Nid of Valir, I, yeah, I can't say these names, but if you like Nid of Valir, you should get Thing Valir. 
It doesn't change the game a ton. It doesn't make it more difficult. It just gives you more options on your turn when you win that auction. So instead of taking just a basic card, say I really want this, this artifact, I can take this artifact if I'm the first player. Just gives you a little more stuff to think about, a little more options. It's probably going to lower how many heroes you get because you're going to be taking less cards. You're going to be getting more artif artifacts and all that type of thing. So you may not get as many heroes, but you're going to make up for it in the points with the other cards, which is pretty cool. Everything about this expansion is cool. It has the same artwork as before. So, you know, the cool little black and white characters. I really like the artwork in this game a ton. Production is the same. Cardboard. Camp looks like a tavern, but it's different enough so you know that it's the camp and not a tavern. I like everything about this. So this isn't going to change my rating for Nidavellir. And I don't rate expansions. So needless to say, Nidavellir is BGM accepted. This is BGM accepted. So I, I dig it quite a bit. So that's what you're going to get in the expansion. Thing Valir for the game Nidavellir. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming. Yeah.